Before Michael's London show, he invited Princess Diana and Prince Charles backstage, where he presented them with a cheque for £450,000 for the Prince's Trust, which supports young people with homelessness and mental health issues. He also discussed charity organisations with Diana, who told him of the Great Ormond Street Hospital. Michael visited the hospital four days later and spent hours roaming the wards, meeting patients and lifting spirits. The People's Princess and the King of Pop shared more than just royal titles. Diana, Princess of Wales and mother to the future King of England, developed a strong friendship with global music sensation Michael Jackson due to her love of his music, their mutual passions for creating good in the world, and the common experience of having their individual lives play out under constant media scrutiny. Already a huge fan, she reportedly listened to the albums Thriller and Bad repeatedly. Diana and Jackson met July 16, 1988, when along with her then-husband Prince Charles, she attended Wembley Stadium for Jackson's Bad Tour. At the time, humanitarian Jackson had donated £150,000 for the youth-oriented Prince's Trust charity. Jackson, who spoke of his relationship with Diana numerous times during his life, was nervous about meeting the princess for the first time ahead of his performance and had decided to remove the song Dirty Diana from the concert set list. He was worried the track about a rock groupie would be inappropriate to perform before a member of royalty bearing the same name. On hearing of his decision, Diana asked him not to exclude the song as it was one of her favorites by the artist. I took it out of the show in honor of Her Royal Highness, Jackson told Barbara Walters in 1997, referring to their first meeting. Diana reportedly danced during the concert as Prince Charles remained seated. Jackson also gifted the couple two miniature tour jackets for their sons, Princes William and Harry. Diana and Jackson had an easy rapport and their friendship developed over time and across geographic boundaries. We were very close, Jackson told German media in 1999. She was extremely close by phone. I was still married to Lisa Marie Presley. Diana woke me up usually late at night, mostly after 3 in the morning, and then she held me for hours on the telephone. She talked about children and the press. Jackson's former bodyguard, Matt Fides, corroborates the late-night calls, going as far as to say the singer was in love with Diana. Jackson felt she was the only person in the world who could understand his life in terms of not being able to go anywhere and the media stories that got out of hand. The intrusion into the private life, having no privacy whatsoever. The pair shared a mutual distrust of the growing media presence in their lives, especially the paparazzi who relentlessly chronicled their every public moment. Before, during and after her marriage to Prince Charles, Diana was the most photographed person in the world. Jackson's ever-changing appearance and unusual behavior had tabloids speculating over his every appearance. Although they would only meet in person once during their lifetimes, their friendship endured until Diana's death on August 31, 1997. According to Jackson, on hearing the news of her passing, Jackson told Walters he fell down in grief and cried. In shock, Jackson postponed a scheduled performance of his history tour. When he did return to the stage, he dedicated the performance to Diana. The song he performed was Gone Too Soon, which he wrote for late Ryan White, an AIDS victim, whom he befriended in the 80s and helped thus destigmatize socializing with HIV patients. As Princess Diana famously did during her time working with numerous AIDS-related charities and physically interacting with sufferers of the illness. Jackson was not present at Diana's London funeral alongside other friends of the late princess, including Elton John and George Michael, but attended a memorial service for her held in Los Angeles where he told reporters he was there in honor of my friend who is no longer here. I love her. Recalling their friendship in 2003, Jackson reportedly said of Diana that she was one of the sweetest people I've ever known because we could relate to each other. We shared something in common with the press. 
I don't think they hounded anyone more than her and myself, and we had a relationship where we could call each other late at night, just cry on each other's shoulders. That same year, Michael Jackson was interviewed by Martin Bashir, who also famously interviewed Princess Diana back in 1995. In fact, it was Diana's interview to Bashir that convinced Michael to give in to Bashir's numerous advances, who pursued him for an interview for years, which he no doubt later regretted, as did Diana. Following Jackson's death in 2009, aged 50, the true depth of his friendship with Diana and the exact content of those late-night conversations remains unknown other than Jackson's retelling. More than 31 million American viewers tuned in to watch the coverage of Jackson's memorial service on July 7, 2009, making it the second most watched daytime funeral ever recorded. It is fitting then that the first drew 33.2 million viewers on September 6, 1997, and was the funeral of his friend Diana, Princess of Wales.